All right, so you're a high-level user right now, and you are struggling with your emails showing up in the primary inbox. You're either struggling in a way in which, you know, um, you're currently right now either, you know, bulk tech emailing, or you are just emailing your new users as they sign up, a welcome email, or you're walk emailing your leads. But for some reason, they are not getting your emails, and for some reason, you're like, hey, what do I do about this, right? So I'm going to cover a few things as far as how to identify, you know, when you you they open your emails, I'm also going to cover how you can go ahead and prevent your emails from going to spam. Okay. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, just do me a favor, hit the like button right now, hit the subscribe button. It's a little thumb workout for you, so just go ahead and do that for me right now. So let's go ahead and cover first off how you can prevent your high level emails or send emails from high level and your emails don't go to spam. Okay. So in this video, we're pretty much going to cover, you know, are you you know uh, we're going to cover a few things. Okay. So first thing first, we're going to do it in a custom based format, in a question based format. So the first question is, are you using the high-level central domain or are you using a high-level dedicated domain? Let's kind of dive into it here. So when you go into a high-level account and you go into email services, I want you to ask yourself a question here is like, am I using the high-level domain in the sense as to um, um, the lead connector, uh, the lead connector domain here to send emails, or am I using a, a mail gun or a custom um, um, domain to send my emails, right? So if you're using Lead Connector, now a lot of people do and see the group do do see good success with it, but I personally don't use the Lead Connector domain. What does that mean? That means when you when someone receives your email, it's going to have you know from you know m m g dot m s g n s s whatever sender dot net, right? I don't use that because a few things is one I can't warm up. Um, um, what you call it, the lead connector or the high level um, inbox, but I can warm up my inbox. What is a warm up? A warm up is basically just think about it in the sense as to AI communicating with each other. All right, I'm going to go ahead and show you an example here. I'm going to go into my inbox and let me see if I can find it right here. Uh, so this is, for instance, this is an example of an uh, of a a a uh, an email that has been warmed up. Hi, my new grammar founder. Optics, blah blah blah. Now, if you notice, this email has a code here. This S four P J blah blah blah. What this code signifies is basically this. Whoever this email is from is basically sending me. There's an AI. So think about it in a sense as to the best way to illustrate it is. I want you to think about it in a sense as to think about it as there's a pool, right? There's a pool, right? And this pool, everybody basically connects to your inboxes, right? So everyone connects to your inboxes, right? And then basically all AI does is it basically allows every, it just uses each inbox and then emails everybody else automatically, right? So it's like we're emailing ourselves, but we're not really emailing ourselves because AI is doing it automatically. That is what a warm-up means. What is what does a warm-up allow? Why do you warm up the email? The best way to think about it is in a sense is to, there's a few factors to determine if your emails land up in the primary tab or if your emails will land in the promotion tab or if your emails will land in the spam tab. Okay, so let's talk about the spam tab. So your emails will land in spam if, one, your domain is very new. Let's say you, you just bought, purchased the domain. The domain is, you know, a week old, two weeks old, and you're sending emails from that domain um, and you've integrated with Mailgun, it's going to mark it as spam because it's going to be like, well, this is a new domain. Why are they emailing right now? That's one. Two. What is the track record of that that email? Have you had normal interactions with other inboxes? Think about it as a friend, right? Think about it as your social credibility, right? Has your inbox had a good credibility of emailing other, other inboxes back and forth, right? Let's say inbox A, right? Let's say, for instance, inbox A is a brand new inbox, right? So we have a, we have a, uh, let me, let me exit this here and let's come into my high level right here. So let's say we have, Inbox A, right? So Inbox A has a good track record, or let's say has a good track record. In Inbox B, it's basically two weeks old, right? So what what the the uh, Gmail is looking at, Yahoo, Outlook, uh, AOL, what they're looking at is like, hey, okay, so Inbox B, how many emails have they sent out, and how many people have replied to them? So let's say Inbox B sends out a hundred emails and zero replies. It's like, okay, this is spam, right? Automatically, it's like, okay, this is spam, right? Versus it goes, okay, so inbox B has sent out, you know, 100 emails and got 100 replies back. Then it's like, okay, so this is a very credible email. It's a very credible domain. It's a very credible company. It's a very credible sender. So we take the emails and put it in a primary inbox. But 
that is how you avoid going to spam is as far as like you'll think about it as your Gmail or your inbox credibility. Now, let's say on the other end, let's say inbox B now has a track record of sending a lot of promotional style emails, which is high HTML content, right? There's a lot of links, there's a lot of images that will make your email go to spam. Okay. If you're emailing people and you're putting links in your emails, you put in spam, you put in uh, um, images in your emails, that will make your emails 1 million percent go into the spam box and nobody is going to read it. Okay. So that's one thing which I factor in there is I want you to factor in as far as like, your email, how um, um, is your email con connecting it, uh, containing any, you know, links, images, high HTML content, or is your email um, just very plain text like, you know, the one I received over here from this guy that says, hey, man, you were just very plain, no links, look at this, no links, no nothing, just very plain email. That's what you want. You want a plain email um, initially until you built up a good track record with sending that person, then you want to go ahead and put HTML style content, right? So that's it. Make sure you're warming up your domain. And then another thing as well that I want to cover is is your SPF, right? The next thing I want to cover here is your SPF, your DKIM, DMARC records. So what is that? That's basically, think about it in the sense as to um, the reporting for your emails, right? And then also think about it as just various maintenance records are set up for your emails, right? It's very important that you have your SPF DKIM, DMARC records, you can find videos on YouTube on how to set this up, but you must very much importantly. So how you set it up is very simple, is what you would do is you get the records that you want to send from either, you know, um, whatever you're hosting. If, you, if, you hold, hold, if you're hosting your inbox on Google Workspace, if you're hosting it on Zoho or, you know, Outlook, wherever it is that you're hosting it, what you're going to do is you're going to give you the records and you're going to take those records, okay, whatever your SPF records, Okay, you're going to take your DKIM records and then you're also going to take your DMARC records and then you're going to take this records and then you're going to go into wherever you purchased your domain. Let's say you purchased your domain from um, GoDaddy or you purchase your domain from Google Domains. You purchase, there's a bunch of places you can purchase your domain from, right? Wherever it is that you purchase your domains, what you're going to do is you're going to go over there and you're going to go to add a DNS record. Okay, you're going to go add a DNS record and then you're going to go ahead and add either, um, it's either going to be a TXT record or I believe most of them are all TXT records. Yeah, it's all TXT records. There's no A records. Or um, uh, yeah, you just go ahead and add a TXT record in there. Um, I go ahead and cover that in a few videos, but I want to go ahead and keep this video very short. Like I said, there's a bunch of tutorials out there on YouTube. You can watch that um, as far as how to set up uh, SPF DKIM, right? The next thing you want to cover is obviously I spoke about how old is your domain. Are you currently warming up your inbox? We covered that. Now, as far as warming up your inbox, as far as the AI tool that I use where you know, like I said, my email and my email then gets into a pool of emails, right? It's that vast pool where we are all basically emailing, you know, back and forth and emailing back and forth and emailing each other back and forth using AI. Um, there's various uh, tools out there. You can look up uh, my favorite and I use this for cold email. Most of you who've watched this channel know that we grow our channel via cold email. I do. I absolutely do do paid ads, but the majority of what I do is mostly coming from my cold email side of things, right? But a few tools out there, you can look them up instantly, right? Dot AI. They are pretty good tool. You can check instantly out. Instantly will be um, very good tool for uh, warming up your inbox. Uh, there's I think one box, uh, there's a bunch of tools out there. Optics, just, just Google. If you Google right now, um, Domain warm up, inbox warm up, um, cold email warm up. Hundred percent, you find tools out there. Average going rate, you're looking at maybe sixty, seventy, maybe ninety bucks, give or take, to warm it up. No more than ninety bucks, you can go ahead and warm up your inbox. This is very important if you don't want to go into spam. Uh, the next thing is, does your reply to to and domain send and domain match? Let's go ahead and kind of look at this, guys. If you look at this, right? Let's look at this. All right. So this from here, he's using he's using a sending tool. That is not a, um, um, a high level um, sending tool. So if you know this is from to you know my email, but let's say uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send myself an email, right? Let's go ahead and exit out of this. I'm gonna go ahead and search for myself. Let's go ahead and search for myself. All right. So that's me. And then now I'm going to go ahead and send myself an email. So I'm going to send myself an email and send myself an email. Okay. And the email is going to be, Hey, Emmanuel, 
it's Emmanuel here your awesome self all right and I'm gonna go ahead and send that all right so I want you to pay attention to something here all right um let me see if I can pull that up and show you guys here in a bit okay if you notice here I want you to pay attention to this I'm gonna blur out my personal email here um but if you notice it says from Emmanuel at you know you know whatever it is hello reply to dot now this is lining in the domain because my my inbox has been around for a very long time but the main thing i want you to pay attention to here is the from and the reply to okay usually when you have a new account you want to make sure that they match okay you want to make sure that this is pretty much the from is emmanuel with rizmresults.com and the reply to is email at rizmresults.com the reason why this is a little different was because we kind of i made the mistake of burning the domain and it's the reason why um the reply to is a little different okay uh, another thing you want to go ahead and cover there is what is your opt-out rate looking like right what is your opt-out rate looking like how is how are people are people opting out you know very drastically to your emails are, are your emails not um, um, uh, what is the what is the lack of a better word there I mean, let's, let's go ahead and kind of make this a little bigger uh, are people opting out on a, on a vast drastic rate because if people are, if you have a very high opt-out rate then you can't then it's very it's almost impossible um for you to um actually see any success now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and show you something i want you to see this if you notice on this email that i sent you it says accepted hey manual it's manual here i want you to see here it says accepted right and then when i open it it should say let me see if i can find my phone i want you to see how this this works um When I open it, what you see here? All right. See, it says open, delivered. So it goes accepted, delivered, open. So it goes from right to left. I am able to see when someone opens my emails. And the reason I'm able to see this is because I use a tool called the uh, Marketers Toolkit. So it is Marketers uh, GH or Custom Marketers Toolkit. It's, I, I pay about roughly about $2.97 a month to be able to have access to this, but this gives me the ability to customize. You can find them on $2.97 a month and you can turn it on where you can see when someone opens your emails. To be able to track your open rate, to be able to track your opt out rate at the same time as well. Um, those are a few tools. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. And for that, you know, as I say always.